The new update has brought a new structure and so it's time for me to destroy it. Come along for the ride. I collected every single item from the never update in this lovely space. Right next to that is the cave update place and then the same for the mangrove wood in the wild update. However, 1.20 presents a bit of a challenge because this is the list of every feature inside of it. For some features, it's as easy as having a farm of existing items, taking those items to a crafting table, and then wow, is that an insane number of flocks of bamboo? It's actually kind of not right, but you can make the bamboo planks and then make every single sub variant off it. But there's a problem with the rest of this list, and it's not just that there's 99 items here, that's a very good problem to have, it's the fact that it covers so many different huge branches of the game, and so today I figured we'd look at just one of them, archaeology, and show you how much there is to do, especially in an old world, when it comes to uncovering all of those pot shards, for example. Can we get every single pot shard and a sniffer and start all that stuff? It seems impossible, but let's give it a shot today. First things first though, if we're going to be using one of these brushes, I want to make sure it's an absolute top of the line model, and so we're going to enchant it to the very best we can do, throw the mending on there, and throw the unbreaking on there too. But let's take our new shiny brush into some unloaded chunks, and hopefully find something suspicious to turn into mush. Oh wow, isn't that interesting? You can brush obsidian. There's no reason to, but it's kind of nice to see the particles go up like that. My goal today is to go to every single archaeology structure and see what we get that way. First, of course, I had to come all the way out here, though, 4,000 blocks away from home, because this is where I actually find structures. Or more importantly, structures which I haven't already discovered, so when they generate in for the first time, they'll have suspicious sand. And I'll be doing this, by the way, with no particularly special gear in terms of water breathing, although a potion or a turtle helmet goes a long way, I hopefully will show you how to do even the ocean ruins without needing either of those. So that'll be a lot of fun, but let's go find the new structures. By the way, all those bamboo planks that I gathered for the intro, I forgot to put away, and so handily enough, I actually have exactly what I need to make a bamboo raft. This is... Uh, a boat, but it's brand new for 1.20, just like the archaeology that we're going to do, so it'll be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go first of all to this one, because this is, I believe, the first structure I've cleared, but this is an ocean ruin, as you can see, looking pretty good, and is there another ocean ruin? Yes. But with some insane luck, it actually turns out that just slightly across the ocean, there's another one, and this one happens to be a warm ocean ruin. So we're gonna go down here, and we're gonna specifically look for some suspicious sand. A pro tip is break yourself some sand, regular, non-suspicious kind, and then make sure you have an empty inventory space, and then the pick block key, which can be bound in your control, if you're in a controller, it's not bound by default. If you're on a mouse, it's bound to the middle click. You can use that to work out if something is sand or if it's something else. If I use pick block on this smooth sandstone, I don't have any, and so I know for sure this is not sand. You can use this if you really want to, if you don't see very well underwater, you can use this casually to see what's going on. You can also use magma casually to breathe or die, depending on how you want to do things. Uh, but yeah, instead, uh, what we want to do is we're just going to look around for anything that looks slightly suspicious, and we're going to hope we find something somewhere around here. Um, again, making sure we go regularly back for the magma. If, uh, you know, one piece of magma isn't enough for you, or you're taking too much damage, I recommend bringing some magma or soul sand along with you. I think soul sand's a little bit more useful, but magma allows you to stay quite deep down. Or you can make yourself oxygen in an entirely different way, which will look something like this. I'm going to do this really terribly, actually, because there's a baby drowned following me uh, that I'm a little bit worried about, but just make uh, yourself something, a hole that is entirely unsurrounded, and then boom, easy access to it. We just have to kill a baby drowned. Man, that is an annoying type of mob, huh? It's very rare you see baby drowns. I feel like you see baby zombies so often. Baby drowns, not as common though. But yeah, we're gonna keep on looking around for suspicious sand. If you want to confirm it's suspicious sand, this must be, because this is sand and this is not. And so we can go into our oxygen bubble, breathe fully, and we can even from here if we want to probably brush it. You know, that doesn't feel like it should work, but I think it's just about going to, huh? Did you know you could brush from this distance? I didn't until just now. Wow, a whole wheat? <laughs> Super generous. And in this one, we're gonna find a whole piece of flint. No, coal, right? Yeah, coal and wheat. I can, I can smoke some wheat today, just like we all want to do on this blessed... Uh, time. Anyway, with that said, we have a 6.7% chance of getting a sniffer egg, so that's what I'm really hoping for the most. But if we get any uh, pottery shards, that'll of course also be very useful too. So yeah, this little, uh, you know, tiny technique right here is so much easier and more portable than just getting a turtle shell. I Honestly, getting a turtle helmet, it seems like an easy task. You just get five scutes and combine them together. Every time I do it, it just makes me want to die. It's such a long process. Who wants to do that? No, instead, I would much rather do something like this. Uh, you know, I, 
I think the turtle helmet is very powerful, worth getting for some people. I am not one of those people. So now we're going to make another one of these really quick, which is going to kind of panic and do it. Um, again, in this situation, probably go to the surface first. But in this situation, we have another little oxygen hole because I didn't bring magma with me because I came unprepared. Is that what you want to hear? Anyway, speaking of unprepared, look at that. Oh, am I going to be two thirds of the way to making bread? I think I might just be- no, I got gold nugget. Am I the only one who's questioned why you can only make golden carrots and apples? Wouldn't golden bread actually be incredible? You know, it's just bread, but it gives you more saturation. Would be nice. I mean, the Minecraft rule seems to be for weird- Oh! Fifth time! My RNG is so lucky in this update. While doing previous things that rely on randomness, I've had such bad luck in Minecraft. I always get the worst end of the 50-50 Enderman drop odds, for example. But when it comes to this update, I got the silence trim in my second chest, and I got a sniffer on my fifth little sniff right here. That is awesome. So I am going to brush away the last few pieces of suspicious sand that are nice and easy to find. I mean, again, how am I going to make bread or how am I going to fuel my furnaces without it? Or even better, oh, what's that? Two gold nuggets now. I am now two ninths of the way to making my golden bread. Golden bread sounds the tiniest bit like an off-brand cereal, doesn't it? By the way, I am now going to be closer to making that off-brand cereal, but that was a warm ocean ruin. Honestly, just about as good as we could have hoped for. I do need a second sniffer egg. Having one sniffer without a second, basically pointless as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so we are gonna have to find a second one, but that might be better be done at the cold ocean ruins. Assuming we find one of those. Wait, is this a cold ocean ruin just behind the warm one? Or is this a pile of gravel? <sighs> you know, I used to make videos about how bad gravel was and how much I hated it. And gravel's improved a lot since then, but it hasn't stopped disappointing me. Speaking of disappointment, a lot of people get disappointed when it gets dark because you can't really see underwater, and you can't fix that by placing torches everywhere, but you can craft yourself a jack-o'-lantern, and that will do exactly the same, because there are a few sources of light that work underwater. One of these actually spawns in the uh, cold ocean ruins, as you can see. Uh, this one right here actually has some sea lanterns available. This will be really useful because I want to see if there's anything in here. So let's dig a few blocks in, and then let's place a sea lantern down. Wow, I can tell there is no suspicious sand in here. That's actually kind of disappointing. Um, but the other thing you can do if you want to be kind of cheaper than sea lanterns and jack-o'-lanterns, I think jack-o'-lanterns are cheap, but maybe in the wrong way, uh, is you could just use regular lanterns. This is just a torch surrounded by iron nuggets, and uh, placing one of these down has a lot more light, and honestly, it's a lot more accessible for a lot of people, and also just kind of looks a lot better. So yeah, that is my basic strategy here, but we're going to dive right back in, and I'm going to bring myself some oxygen. I had to go all the way back home to get those light sources, uh, but at the same time, I hopefully will get myself some, oh god, some oxygen using the soul sand, which will push me right up to where there's even more oxygen. I, um, honestly, I think magma is a much better deal uh, for what I'm doing right here, but I've always wanted to cover an ocean in soul sand uh, at the bottom, and maybe a little bit of magma in between it just to trap people, but it's just, it's just so enjoyable watching out of nowhere, like, woo! <laughs> and it's gonna be really cool what we're doing here because oh there was suspicious sand here all along What's in the suspicious sand? I don't know. Oh gold nugget. Do I really even need to dig it? Yeah, the suspicious sand was outside the entire time Wow. Also, yeah, the salt sand works a little bit better when you've got a ceiling because then it'll push you towards where you can see more stuff From in here we could even mine some of the gravel and see if there's anything suspicious on the other edges of it. My sand technique doesn't work as well here because I have a fortune free shovel. And even if you don't, you're gonna always, if it's not silk touch, you're always gonna end up with some amount of flint, but still, it's fine. Speaking of fine, I'm hoping for some fine loot. Okay, this is not fine. This is, okay, there we go, just another gold nugget. Not a single pottery shard yet, just a whole world of nuggets. Ah, that's not a nugget. So yeah, um, things are going pretty well so far, all things considered. Um, working out whether something's suspicious or not is sometimes a bit confusing in the dark, but again, I'm doing my best to work around that, and I'm also finding some bricks while I'm at it, so it's not going too terribly for me. Oh, more gold nuggets in the chest, and even some wheat. I am gonna become rich today. You know how YouTubers do that technique where they say, oh, make sure you stay to the end of the video because they want to insult your intelligence and imply it's not worth watching without some crazy hook? Maybe I should do the same, but like, oh, stay, make sure you stay to the end of the video because otherwise you'll never find out how many gold ingots I got. It'll probably be like at least three. Can you imagine how wealthy I'll be? So stay to the end if you want to see that. By the way, I absolutely love 
these soul sand columns. It's so much fun. It jump, it bounces you right out of the water. But before I go, I'm going to put my uh, flint right away in here because I do not need it right now. Maybe take out some coal and put in these blocks right here. And we're going to have to go find another cold ocean ruin and maybe also the other structures we can do archaeology on. Whee! Wait, do you think we could use this to start flying the Elytra? Let's give it a try. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. That's useful. If you wanted to get a head start on a firework rocket, that might be the way. So yeah, we're going to go back to the desert I think I saw earlier to hopefully find a desert well. I love that post this update, you can genuinely say you're excited to find a desert well with real gameplay reasons. Oh, it's amazing. So based on how weird my desert is, it probably goes without saying that this isn't a new desert by any means. Although, I, I don't even know what could be possibly happening. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes about saying that my desert is maybe an old one based on how weirdly generated it is. Have you ever seen the bottom cactus of, uh, texture like this? I don't think most people have. It looks like a green log and most people will never get to except here in this world where it tried to generate all of these ones twice and wasn't quite sure where to do it maybe. Very weird stuff. Anyway, so <laughs> look at that. Next to this, there's a strip of savanna before more desert starts. I don't know why. I don't know how. I just know I'm probably not finding any uh, desert around here. So I'm looking around for a desert right now, and it's not going very well, but apparently instead there is a shipwreck. Can we do archaeology on a shipwreck? We should be able to. Honestly, can you even call that a shipwreck? Have you ever seen a ship so perfectly placed on the water? Yeah, that's not wrecked at all. That is a full boat that just exists in my world. Wow. That's really cool. I love that. That's... It's one of the rarest, weirdest things to come across, but I do need to go inside one of these for the new trims, so I guess we'll do it. How, how bizarre. Honestly, it's so weird that it's actually floating on the water. I don't think I can easily get inside. I'm gonna have to do some weird, either I can climb those vines, but I can't, so we have to get a little bit of a head start with the soul sand. Climb the vines, climb these vines, break the perfect boat. Okay, I can't, I can't do that, that's not okay. Instead, we'll just fly around the boat and try and land on the top that way. You know what? No other way to do it was impossible. And inside the boat, we're going to find... Oh, ho, ho. still so much better than archaeology. Just, you, you really don't need uh, to, to be digging there for gold nuggets when you can look inside one of these chests and find five feathers. Actually pretty useful. So my plan consists of searching for a desert, by the way, by swimming only. If I hit the edge of shore, I don't keep looking. And it's not been going... Wait! Oh! Whoa! I... I was sure this was about to lead into half an hour of nothing but ocean looking and maybe finding no ruins. But that is a pile of gravel, which is a good sign. If you can find these, they're not always going to generate. But when you can find these, there is some good news. Oh, wow, there's good news on the surface, too. Look at that. It's a piece of white dye, I think. <laughs> wow, so good. I'm going to put this right in my most important place. But um, yeah, as you can see, there is some terracotta right here on the surface alongside some suspicious gravel. The suspicious gravel might just get me something valuable. Okay, is, is it still there? It is. Ah, it gets me a hanging sign, which I can put on this tree to confirm my first trail ruins. So the trail ruins is one of the most bizarre structures to actually dig around. Every single time I've done it so far, I've left the experience wondering, have I been doing this right precisely? So today, let's do exactly the same thing. Uh, we're going to dig up all these blocks. We maybe should make a chest to store them all in. And uh, what we're going to do now is just dig the entire thing out and see what it's like underneath there. <laughs> that witch just poisoned herself. That's funny. Oh, no. Okay. Should not have said that. You know what? I'm sorry. Poison is not a funny situation. But you know what is a funny situation? Finding a trail ruins with multiple pieces of white dye in it. I'm not even going to bother finishing brushing that one off. I'll brush this one instead where I'm going to find, oh, even better, more white dye. I've never felt so blessed by the amount of an item that I've received. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're going to dig down from this place now that the rain has thankfully gone. And uh, here's the wonderful thing about trail ruins. They kind of vanish for a bit and then appear again. That might sound a bit confusing, but let me show you what I mean here. We're going to dig down. I hope we're going to find stuff below here. Okay, just like that, we've dug ourselves down. Just 10 blocks and wow, there is some orange glazed terracotta. 
This is a really interesting block by itself, but we're gonna make a little staircase out of here because we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of excavating. So this is where we're gonna store all the things we find in the, uh, the the trail ruins right next to this lovely tree we've got. So um yeah, we just have so many tiny pieces of garbage that I think we're just gonna have to store away. I think uh, some of this is potentially useful and a lot of it is just not. This wooden hoe is technically treasure, so we'll put it in here alongside my bread uh, precursor, my golden nuggets and my coal, just so I have some inventory space, which I'm gonna need because this is a huge structure filled with huge and potentially valuable things like this, my first pottery shard. Oh, it's been uh, the better part of half an hour and I finally have my first pottery shard from archaeology. Just a reminder when people say like, oh yeah, archaeology stuff is far too common. Actually getting your hands on even a single pottery shard, it's not necessarily easy and getting your hands on all of the pottery shards, that's where, oh, I broke a suspicious stand. Oh, I should not have done that. That's where things can get a little bit harder, but this, Oh, look how valuable that is. I'm gonna keep that for so long. But yeah, this is one of the best structures to go to for archaeology. Because look at this. There is two on the surface. There's some seeds over here. <laughs> oh man, that's rough, huh? And then over here, there's something even better. Because I think it's gonna be more white dye, isn't it? Please. Okay, it's worse than white dye. So um, yeah, we're gonna go dig around this entire thing now. Being very, very careful about what we break. This is the whole point of archaeology, as far as Mojang says. It's to make sure you break every single block carefully because you don't know when you're gonna find an archaeological find. And, uh, oh, look at that. Second pottery shard. Danger and sheaf. Should I take the warning or... You know, it's fine. So yeah, I love destruction projects in Minecraft. I've spoken about that enough before. So let's talk about this one because I think this has a really interesting, uh, you know, like uh, issue of where do you define the line between the structure and the outside world? Obviously the stone and the diorite and the copper, uh, you know, like those are outside of the structure, but are these random blocks here a part of it? I mean, they are, and they're technically useful in some way, but because you can't access some of this structure without excavating the rest, is the stone above and around and etc. all of a part of the structure Itself. I don't know what the answer to that question really is. I just know I'm gonna destroy all the blocks which aren't gravel because I know for a fact there's no suspicious dirt slab. And I'm gonna get my hands on a lot of blocks which might be fun to do something with. Um, we could maybe turn that into a fun little project later. But for now, we're gonna take all these blocks and find all the gravel. And then, once we've got a net, we're going to go ahead and destroy as much as we can, leaving only the most suspicious of blocks. So anything suspicious here? Yeah, actually, two suspicious blocks next to each other. One of them's got a pot in, the other one's got some beetroot seeds, I think, you know? Minecraft and beetroot seeds, name a less iconic deep duo. <laughs> Seriously, I feel like uh, Bedrock throws beetroot seeds wherever they can in the in the, uh, the loot table. It is a fairly cool thing if you have a world from like 2010 that you haven't played till just now. Uh, but otherwise, I feel like beetroot seeds might annoy you more than they help you, but I'll take it. It's fine. It's an interesting piece of uh, garbage loot. But um, yeah, I really like this new structure because of the way it blurs the lines of the surroundings around it. Like I think the fossil had the potential to be one of the coolest parts of Minecraft. Except for the fact that the only really value in it is that you find coal in there sometimes. And so I really love that the Trail Ruins is actual archaeology. It's really rare below your Minecraft world. So they gave you the hint above the surface, which doesn't usually work as best I can tell. But it's, it, you know, it's worked for me twice so far, so I'm not going to uh, you know be too mean to it. But um, there's this really fun idea to me of having a structure um, with... Uh, which exists below the world, where you kind of have to explore for it. I think any exploration-based structure which you actually want to find is a good thing, and I think this fits that criteria, if only because of the reason that, like, it's filled with so many weird things that coming to it is a chore, like, sorting through all the garbage you find, like, oh yeah, we've come all the way down here, I've got to make a staircase out. Okay, here's my plan, I'm actually just gonna dig a tunnel until I get to the ocean and then I'll use the ocean as my tunnel in. So that should be ocean directly above me. Boom, yes it is. And now I've got a way in and out. Look at me, genius idea. Gotta say, my archeological findings are coming along pretty nicely. I've got myself three of them so far, uh, as well as obviously getting some mud brick slabs, which not that valuable, but it's nice. Some terracotta, and uh, in general, you just get, you know, getting some nice new blocks. This is fairly, you know, like as a late game player, you don't have much use from 15 orange terracotta or 11 orange glazed, but it is still nice to be able to pick these things up while we go for the super important things down here. So let's go down one more time and let's really start tunneling away 
away at the rest of this structure. I kind of like the fact that this is a this is probably Minecraft's like most vertical structure ever too, which means you have to kind of dig down into it, which again like gives you the fear of the suspicious gravel. You can't let this block fall. If it falls, you lose it. So instead you have to brush it first, get another pottery shard. Hey, is that a second creeper one? Yes, it is. And then we have to break our way down slowly but surely. And uh, yeah, I also kind of like that it's going to leave you a big hole in your Minecraft world. I was a big, I, you know, I'm one of the big pioneers, the believers in the idea of destroying a chunk or destroying anything actually being a good idea. This is a structure where the only way to find things is to destroy them. I mean, Minecraft say you're preserving them. You know, you're doing archaeology. You're, you're, you're trying to hide things, uh, you're preserve things for future generations. But no, what you're actually doing here is you're actually, oh, oh, my first armor trim that isn't from an ancient city, which is a weird thing to say, but <laughs> still pretty nice, right? Um, okay, that's a good find. Do you think we'll find another one? I think we might. I think we're going to find, okay, that's a candle. <laughs> it's really dark in here, so I'm just going to quickly light a candle and, well, that did a lot, didn't it? <laughs> I feel weird putting a torch down in a, in a, in a place from the past. Is that, is that considered okay? I guess it has to be. So let's, uh, let's get out of here now using my old staircase, which is getting more and more, uh, convoluted, it looks like. As you can see, by the way, coming to a trail ruins without a shulker box, or, you know, it'd be nice if there was a bundle, but in the absence of it, uh, needing a shulker box probably will do you pretty nicely, because even this tiny one that I've accidentally found is resulting in a huge amount of archaeological doing. Oh, man, I found one and I immediately break it. Heartbreaking. So yeah, uh, there's a valuable lesson in here somewhere. I'd be lying if I said I learned it. We, we got a lot of stuff here. Uh, my hole isn't so bad, right? I mean, especially if I put my diorite and my stone and my cobble away. Uh, you can see that I've ended up in a pretty decent way uh, with a sniffer egg and a host armor trim, a free danger trim. Uh, we got a lot of pottery shards and I'm clearly gonna have to come back here and uh, excavate some more sometime, or find some others across my world. But something that is incredibly crucial is finding another ocean ruin. I mean, one sniffer egg is very close to having zero sniffer eggs, and the other thing that's super important is a desert well and a desert temple. For most people, if you don't find a desert immediately, what you should do is just keep on uh, heading further, further. So I'm gonna fly because it's the fastest way around the world, but just keep walking in a direction and eventually you'll find a desert. Um, there's no real easy way to know where one is unless you happen to know your Minecraft world uh, like me. So I am at, right, what is this right now? Negative 11, 700, 4,000. I think at about 9,000, 6,000. I usually go via the nether, so I don't know the real world coordinates. Um, sev several thousand blocks away, there's a mesa biome which borders a desert, which I've never been to. So if I'm really lucky, that desert might have some desert wells. And if I'm really lucky, they won't have generated already, meaning I can get myself some archaeology from those too. It's a little bit of a gamble, but it's one that I guess I'm going to have to take because this, this ocean has provided me with two ocean ruins right at the corner, and then nothing else, and then a single trail ruins, which maybe I should be happy with, but as far as this desert is concerned, there's nothing here for me. Not even a single desert well. They're double as common on bedrock, but I don't see one here. And that's fine, I guess. Pro tip, by the way, when you have different corners of your world that are several hundred blocks apart, I would say don't just build nether portals there. Have something recognizable around them and have these big pathways between them. That is what I have done over here. It's a bit of a weird pathway. But as you can see, I'm going to my mesa biome right now. It has a deep dark below it. And here is my mesa. I could put some skulk around it to represent the deep dark, but I'm lazy. But not so lazy, I can't search for a desert well because this... Uh, well, I mean, uh, is uh, one of the weirdest combinations of biomes I've ever seen. It's a frosty plain, snow, you know, snow-covered plains with a jungle next to it. And then just to the north, you can see right over there where my flags are, the snowy plains, which, you know, the jungle. I put the trees there just to represent how fun it is. Turns right in to a mesa biome. I don't think this is generation change. I think this is genuinely, this is just a weird seed. I could check at some point, but I haven't. And uh, yeah, I remember at the edge of this mesa somewhere just over there, um, there being a desert. If you don't know, almost every single mesa will border a desert, which means if you find a mesa, you've just about found a desert and, oh, there's phantoms over here. That's a bad sign. That means I've probably been quite close to the desert, which means we might have to head quite far into a desert if we find one, which I don't think I have yet. I think this is, in fact, a plains biome. Am I, have I been misled? Do you see that, do you see that biome appear and disappear? 
Nah, I was probably imagining that. Whoa, a cherry grove biome. Oh man, I went so far away for one. And there's one. <laughs> okay, this is clearly, I don't want to say a generation error, but this is not how it's meant to, okay. Where, where I thought there was a desert, apparently there's a cherry grove instead. That is very confusing. Um, have you ever seen something like this? Now this is a discovery and a half, huh? If you like cherry groves, by the way, I'm gonna be building one on my end, I think, the day this goes up, so maybe tune into that. Uh, this Let's Play world really is like Let's Play and Livestream world. It's like, this is my comfort world. When I wanna play Minecraft, I often wanna play on this world. Sometimes that results in it being really easy, cause like, okay, if I wanna find this desert, which I remember there being, but I either it changed generation into a meadow biome, or a, a, I guess a cherry grove, or I imagined that there was a desert here. No, no, I haven't. No, I have. <laughs> oh, this is cool though, look at this. Found myself a mineshaft. This is the easiest chest in the history of mineshaft chests. Let's see what it is. Free diamond, yes please. Free torches, okay, I guess. Some bread, no, I'm good. Okay, so as it turns out, if you think you know where a desert is in your world, you should also probably mark that on a map because I cannot find it. Uh, this is why you should use facts rather than feelings in Minecraft. Everywhere else, feelings are better than facts. Don't get me wrong, big fan of feelings. Doesn't work for finding Minecraft coordinates. Oh, actually, look at that. That's something I must have built, right? There's no way that's natural generation over there, which means if we're near something I've built, what even is that? What what did I build this for? And what did I, did, did I, I really wish I could tell you. There's a fun ramp here with no story. And then there's a little bit of a tunnel down. It's not important, I guess. There are more abandoned mine shafts around here, but this is just a giant mesa biome, nothing else. My bad, guess I got that wrong. This presents me with a huge dilemma because exploring too much of a brand of a old world that is already 900 something megabytes is going to cause serious issues, not just in terms of making it more buggy and susceptible to crashes, but also quite crucially here in terms of, uh, you know, being able to like share the world with people. I have the world in the marketplace and after I get all the armor trims, I intend to uh, share it with you uh, there again. So how exactly uh, do I best explore this world? I think I'm gonna try two things. One is gonna be filling in gaps between parts of the world I've already seen. So if I fly that way, back towards the origin, there might be a desert there somewhere that I haven't been past before. And the second is if I, that doesn't work after long enough, I think it's worth using a tool like Chunk Base to avoid unnecessary exploration. Again, I if I'm traveling 10,000 blocks in a certain direction, I'd at least like to travel that 10,000 blocks efficiently rather than not knowing where I'm going. But I try my very best uh, to avoid that second outcome. So I'm gonna try and explore around my existing world and hope that I find a desert. <laughs> is this a desert or is this a beach? Um, Wait, what is, what is happening here? So I think this is a, no, it's a beach. Ah, uh, it's a very weird beach. I don't know, have you ever seen a beach that looks like this? I would go to a beach like this in real life. It would be much more fun than sitting in the, in the gravelly mess all day that is a real beach. Honestly, what, what is happening with this biome? It definitely looks like it's not meant to be here. But um, yeah, we're gonna keep on flying and we're gonna keep on trying to find a desert. Oh, this is the mangrove swamp that I destroyed, right? Nope, different mangrove swamp. Nope, same mangrove swamp. Nope, different mangrove swamp. Nope, same mangrove swamp. Wow, I didn't realize how close these two things were together. So I don't think I've been anywhere that far away from the mangrove swamp, which means I have a good chance of finding an ocean ruin for a sniffer, but also much more importantly for my goal today. Uh, Cause you know, I, I wanna find all the 1.20 features. Two sniffers important for getting those valuable sniffer plants. But also what's important is, oh, is this, this is a real desert. Is it one I've been to? This is the funny thing, like for most people, like yeah, you just look around, find the structures. In a world this old, I might have been here in 2015, might have been here six months ago, might have been here six days ago and forgotten about it, if I'm being honest with you about my own memory. Um, but is this a valid desert? Let's find out. Is there anything in here that looks like I've touched it? That would be a good sign. You know, let's let's focus first on finding structures. The the easiest way to be sure is if we do find a temple or well, we if it has suspicious sand, it's new. If it doesn't, it's old or bugged. Okay, I found a pillager outpost and a desert well. If 
These are brand new. I have myself some new armor trims. If they're old, then I guess I'll actually still get the potential for armor trims over there. But I won't get suspicious sand from this desert well. It's very well hidden. What are we going to find inside it, though? Oh, yes. Oh, oh no. It's just a stick. <laughs> I flew all this way to do some archaeology, and I discovered that in the past... They had sticks. So you can excavate the area around one of these. Sometimes you do find sand just in the ground. I don't think we have those. We'll dig the area underneath it too. Maybe just to see if there's anything else. Come on, not just... You can't give me one suspicious sound. Okay, two. That seems fair, I guess. What's in here? Oh, it's a... It's... Oh, no. It's, it's a brick, right? I got a stick and I got a brick. <laughs> I travel. <laughs> you know, Minecraft's a cruel, cruel mistress. Sometimes you find a trail ruins when you're not expecting it, and sometimes you get a stick and a brick. Uh, such is the game. You gotta play it that way. And I don't know if you'll find any suspicious sand around it, but I'm gonna break some stuff around here just to kind of check. Archaeology was one of the mechanics I was most excited about before this update, as like uh, being able to actually do the first time sort of thing. Um, but it seems as though, if I'm not mistaken, this desert well is not going to contain anything particularly well. So we could actually remove another layer and then make this thing float in the middle of nothing. We'll end up with a lot of needless sandstone, sure. But don't you think that'll be fun? <laughs> Just having a desert well that exists with nothing around it. Actually, wait. If there was more suspicious sand, we would find it. No, we're not finding anything like this. But still, good idea, right? Really, really solid idea. Only let down by... Oh, yeah, that's... that's That was nothing. Nothing I could have done to prevent that, huh? Okay. I mean, it's a fun idea, right? The floating desert well that uh, is propelled by the water that it's draining out from it. Anyway, let's see what's in the pillar drought post. Pillar drought posts are such a fun time once you get an elytra. You really don't have to... Oh, okay. Let's just quickly be real quick here. Don't need to pay attention to you. Get in, get out, and then maybe we can find a desert temple to complete our clouds. This is the weirdest desert mountain ever. Um, but it should give us a good view. Well, it would give us a good view if this wasn't the realm. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is one of the biggest downsides of realms. Exit This tra Trails and Tales does not work well on a realm. Solely because of the fact that you just you can't see. Okay, wait! I can see that. that I would have seen that desert well on even like an Xbox 360 from that distance. And this one is old because there is no suspicious sand around it. That is wild to be able to say, but I guess now we know. Wow, that is very, very weird. Oh wait, this, this desert temple most likely literally is wild. Like it would have generated around that update. But uh, yep, this is what it looks like. No, nothing for me here. So I guess we'll just get ourselves out. So I think I was really lucky to find a actually old desert well, as opposed to just the new one. However, the much more important question, which is how am I going to get that second sniffer egg, and how am I going to find a new desert temple, are yet to be answered. I'm hoping that somewhere in this biome there'll be one, but I just feel like I would have seen it already. Uh, hopefully I feel wrong though. Yeah, I think this desert is ending up with no temples. I'd love for just the last minute one to pop out of the water, but it looks like that is not happening. Which means we might be able to explore... Okay, actually, here's a good vibe check. If we explore an ocean, find a ruin, and it has suspicious sand, we know that we might find a desert nearby that has more. Because oftentimes, I, I find deserts will go like across oceans. It's not always the case, but I think closest to an ocean is always where I'm feeling good about deserts. And so we'll go looking for that sniffer egg, and we'll go looking for that temple sort of at the same time. We're really mostly focusing on the sniffer egg and just kind of praying that that leads to something good. I'm going to leave two stacks of flint in my ocean here. I think they'll sit in the ocean forever because I don't think I'm going to ever come back here. But just so future me knows that that was intentional, here are two torches. In fact, when you download the Let's Play World uh, next for the next update in a couple of months or so, uh, you'll be able to get the flint <laughs> in the snowball if you want it. You should not want that. That is a weird thing to want. Speaking of weird things to want, let's make a boat. Oh, no, I'm... Okay, I, I'm... But birch boat or uh, bamboo boat is a hard question to answer. I think we have to go uh, with a bamboo one because the new update means new boats. Those are the rules. I don't make them. 
I'm just having to reluctantly go with them. Oh, I also have to write a sign to make sure you know exactly where the flint are. Uh, and I did it with alliteration, so now you'll want to come back. Anyway, with that said, let's go to the ocean. And let's hope we find an ocean ruin. It's funny, you used to be able to spot ocean ruins by the light in the ocean, but because of this weird realm bug where the ocean seems to be oddly lit up all the time, <laughs> we're kind of just hoping that, like, anything we find could be what we're looking for. It's bad life advice, but it might work out. I was so sure with an ocean this big I would find a ruin, and that ruin would tell me the ocean was new or old. But if you don't find a ruin, you can't find out the age of the ocean. Little bit of a pickle I'm in here. Um, I guess a shipwreck would probably do it too. It's not a guarantee, but a shipwreck with a trim would... No, it wouldn't be. A, a, a shipwreck, old or new, can find you a trim. Only an ocean ruin would prove if this is new or old. And that is not a desert, so it's, it's getting pretty bad. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. Do you see that over there? Is that a ruin on land? Or is that... Wait, what is that, actually? It looks like a boat covered in vines. Oh, it's a tree. That is a very odd thing to see. Um, okay, so there's a lush cave below the swamp. I definitely don't want to be in this swamp because I can't see the water. But it's nice to know. I mean, technically, this is a ruin in the ocean and therefore I should be happy, right? I kind of want to check the chest. I know I shouldn't. I should leave it for future me to enjoy. But what's inside? A bunch of obsidian and some gold nuggets. Yeah. I left all my old gold nuggets earlier. Damn. I feel like anytime I do a challenge relating to exploration, it's always the easiest thing that's the hardest to find. When I did the uh, random seed all trims run, uh, the 33 hour one, when I did that, um, it was the desert. Like I didn't find a single desert biome for 20 hours or something. Maybe they've become rare now. Maybe maybe Mojang wants people to enjoy deserts, so they've made them incredibly rare. And that's fair, except for the fact that I want one. So if you could fix that soon, please. I don't want to get my hopes up yet, but is this a desert? It's looking a bit like a desert. I see cactus. You don't find cactuses and beaches besides wrong beaches. Will there be a desert temple here? Remains to be seen. I also didn't get my sniffer egg, but this is much more important. This is the final part of my archaeology quintet. Yeah, quintet, right? Oh, yes! I feel like I've just started a new Minecraft world because the thing I need most is a desert temple. Oh, that is a good one. I actually was way too excited. I've only just now realized there's a chance I'm not finding any suspicious sand. Oh, no! The chance has come true. <laughs> I've already been here. No. No, tell me it's not true. Tell me I can just mine down anyway. Oh, no. This is an existing desert temple. <laughs> There's an alley in here, for God's sake. Why is there an alley in here? What did I do near here that involved an alley and a bone? What, what, what happened? Okay, I genuinely have no clue <laughs> when I came to this desert or why an alley was here either. But I guess that did happen, and so I don't have any archaeology to do. However, even though this is an old desert temple, because the chest, ooh, okay, is old, here's something fun. I can look inside them, find emeralds, sure, that's nice, I guess. I could find uh, myself some diamonds. I guess I should take those, because I am going to be uh, duplicating some trims soon. But you know what else I'll find? Oh, I just kind of hoped it would appear. Okay, one more chest. Can we find it? No but we could have found the dune trim. I just didn't get lucky. <laughs> I, when did I come to this desert? I don't know. Did I fly over it at some point? Did I ruin my future world by flying over it? I must have. And so let's ruin it for future me too. Oh, a desert well. Oh, I probably came to this village. That must have been it. Cause if this desert well is explored, it is. Then yeah, I came through to this village at some point and by doing so, Future me doesn't get a camel, but gets a lot of wandering traders. Wow, that's interesting, huh? And either of you guys got a cherry sapling? No, you don't, huh? That's a big problem, I would say. Is there something you can do about that one? I guess I'll just wait until the next day and see what happens that way. I do have to do my due diligence, and I that means basically exploring the entirety of this place just to make sure there's not a second desert temple that somehow I haven't explored. 
Is that likely? <laughs> no. <laughs> also, look, you can see that the world was generated in two different times here because there's a mesa surrounded by desert. Well, you know, actually, I don't know what that means. But there's this weird chunk here that's a, a microbiome, which I think they mostly stopped doing. So probably 1.18 terrain, maybe? Oh, there's a whole new section of desert over here. I'm running out of fireworks with which to explore. And so the time is counting down. But look at this desert. It's so big. It's got to have a desert temple. And it's got to be one <laughs> that I just haven't, you know, I just haven't explored yet. I, I haven't come across, haven't noticed. Has to generate freshly in new chunks. I really would love to say that I'm getting a great view of the desert from up here, but I can just about see there's an iceberg, and I can tell that there's not desert over there. That's about the best I'm getting so far. Do you think you shouldn't shake when you're moving just in case it affects something? I'm not sure if that matters or not. But look, more desert. Is there any desert wells? Honestly, at this point, I'm so close to my world origin that this must be super old terrain. But, again, I can't write it off entirely. Is this desert desert well filled? No, it's not. Is this... Do okay. I've been here. It's... If it's in the middle of the ocean, it means I've been here. That's just a fact. It sucks that it's a fact, but it's just a fact. But just in case, will we find any suspicious sand? <gasps> Maybe. That's... Re yeah, wait. How is this possible? I genuinely cannot tell you how it's possible that I come to a desert temple this close. I'm only 2,700 blocks away from everything I know, and I'm finding diamonds here but I am not looking this gift horse in the mouth. I am making sure I get every single piece of suspicious sand that generates. When it takes you this long to find a temple, oh, you've got to make it count with every single shard and every single diamond and every whatever else it wants to give me, I'm willing to take it all. So there is a secret room below the desert temple we're heading into right now. Do you see this over here? More pottery shards for me. Yes, I do. In fact, I think I'm gonna have to start putting these pottery shards in my uh, my torch box just so they stop cluttering the inventory. There's so many different types we have at this point, but let's put them all the way in there and then, oh, maybe the trim's in there too. And then let's keep on digging and seeing what we find. So this is the room. No, it's not. Is it? Is this the room? No. So this is just some random sand that I'm digging and I really think, oh, that maybe, just maybe. Okay, no. I have no idea what we just dug into. <laughs> I'm surprised we didn't go underneath the, uh, where the, where all the stuff was. In fact, yeah, if we go right a bit, we'll end up in the tunnel. And then from here, we can find the new trim. Or sharpness, that, that works too. Or a golden apple, that's fine, I guess. Or some more sand. Or, hey, do an armor trim. Slowly getting those, uh, armor trims locked down, huh? No! Okay, I'm gonna take this stone fresh plate. Just just for safety reasons. <laughs> so yeah, I feel as though this is meant to be where the secret room is, but it's not. So I'm gonna now go down from this instead. Oh, I think I just dug on top of the secret room. So you can break these blocks too, and it will lead you into there, maybe? Yeah, I think I think that's what will happen. Dig block, dig block. Be very careful not to break any suspicious sand. And yeah, that's what happened. I just dug my way into the room from an angle that they probably didn't expect. But there we go. That is more suspicious sand. Two on top of each other. One of it has a pottery shard. A very weird one. And the other one has... Are we just going to find non-stop pottery shards here? or? Oh, no. Non-stop pottery shards and valuable resources. I'll take it all. If you insist, Minecraft... I will I will also insist right back. So yeah, this is quite this this room is bigger than I was uh, kind of going for. There's not that much suspicious sand in here. But uh you know for now, I guess I'll have to take it. I also wait, is this is there another exit? No, that's just another way out. So over here, we would expect there to be maybe some more. No, over here. No, over here. No. Okay. We we've dug a lot of sand. And we've concluded that the desert temple is where you come for more diamonds. But as far as everything else goes, yeah, maybe you're fine by with what you've got. Although actually, no, no. Okay, so two more pottery shards. That's pretty good. That's a decent collection. I got myself three armor trims today. That's also really good. 
And I also got myself my first sniffer egg. I just need one more and the sniff farm is coming home. Why was that desert temple even in the middle of the ocean? I, I really want to just take a second, appreciate the RNG that 1.20 has given me. In fact, you know what? I, every time I say something good about 1.20, nice things happen to me. So I'm going to keep sticking to that. Because this is clearly an old biome, right? I don't, do they make savannas this tall anymore? I don't, this looks like genuinely amplified. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just feeling lucky. I'm going to go for a 2500 block fly home across, ooh, more desert. Wait, are you thinking what I'm thinking? We could find some more stuff. No, we're going to go straight home. And I'm going to do something fun because a lot of you like archaeology, I hope. But there's one thing that some of you like more. And I really hope that it's shipwrecks that aren't wrecked. Is this is this something weird in my world? Or okay, ouch, ouch, ouch. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, just put those blocks right back where I found them. Grab myself a map and grab myself. Is this am I just never gonna find? Okay, put some birch planks down. Am I never gonna find me one of these one of these trims? Is that what this is? That is totally what this is. And that's okay. You know, not everyone in Minecraft deserves a shipwreck trim. It's not, it's meant to be one of the more common ones, but I, I have some bad luck with it, it seems. Whoa, okay, while well, flying home, I've flown past some wither skulls, and oh, we're over here by my UK, or rather my Great Britain. If you don't know, I built Great Britain in Minecraft so I could sleep below the United Kingdom. There's a lot of rules about what I can put in this map for political reasons and, you know, something about the marketplace. But apparently this is not breaching those rules. And you know what else isn't breaching these rules? Being back in the Xbox 360 portion of the world where I don't have to know, I don't have to worry like, oh, is this a new chunk or an old chunk? I know every one of these chunks was generated in the early 2010s, mostly 2012, a few in 2013, which means boom, old terrain, no, no brush needed over here. I don't need to brush these leaves besides for pleasure reasons, I guess. That was quite the journey, but now I'm back here at the armory, and the wonderful thing about this is this is going to be my temporary base of operations for putting trims away. I mean, here are my silence armor trims that I struggled so much for. If you don't know about that, I spent a whole stream in ancient cities, got silent, tri tri silence trim, super, super lucky, especially compared to a uh, silent whisper struggle. But the fun thing about this is uh, it means that I now have all sorts of other stuff that has to be organized. And so here's something fun you get to watch. For those of you who uh, really like chest organization, we're gonna do the fun block placing thing, but it's chest organizing. So let's see what that looks like now. And so after my first week in the update and my first major ancient city raids and indeed archaeology mission under my belt, I now have this many trims and I have this many pottery shards. There are therefore 13 more pottery shards to obtain and a similar number of new trims, uh, which is uh, also, by the way, I then have to duplicate each of these trims because I want a full set of each armor. The only one I have that for is the ward armor trim so far. It's going to be a lot of searching around to make this happen, but that's the fun thing about this update. You could totally choose not to do that too, don't get me wrong, but I love that if you want the challenge, it's out there for you, and that's what you're probably going to be seeing a lot of on the channel soon. I also, uh, I haven't done anything with it yet, but I have this sniff reg I've got to work out what's going on with that soon, and so that'll be a lot of fun. Can you break this and get it back? You can. Uh, but I'm looking forward uh, to having some fun once I get two sniffers, maybe making a fun farm. It's uh, lots of fun stuff coming soon. I hope you've all enjoyed this episode of the Update Adventures Let's Play. Obviously, any new update is a great opportunity to do fun things, but uh, it is a weekly Let's Play series, and you can see the latest going ons in my super old survivor world. And otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed, because I'll see you in the next one, unless you're old because you might die, I guess.